Hey everyone, it's me again. I'm back. I know it's felt like it's been a while since I've done a uh, solo show. The last one I did was me talking about how much I fucking hate Jamie Oliver, which is still true. But <clears throat> it looks like past few episodes, I've been veering away from the uh, topic of the paranormal. So I figured today we might go venture back into that world. Because I know a lot of y'all folks listening at home are friends of mine through that world, the cryptid and paranormal community. I know there are a lot of Bigfoot fans out there <clears throat> listening. And uh, I might even uh, see you guys over in Texas uh, for Josh Turner's uh, Dogman Conference thing, where I will be there with uh, Tex and Jason and Brandy and Randy and Krista and uh, some other friends. And we're all going to be hanging out. And hopefully I'll get to meet some of y'alls. Should be fun. Anyway, so yeah, tonight's another solo show with me. Sorry, folks. Uh, you're stuck with just me tonight. And um, yeah, this is a topic that I've wanted to uh, discuss and try to get off my chest. Because it's a little bit of a point that I've been holding on to. You know, I've been holding my cards close to the vest. And I want to address it now and just kind of let it out there in the world and see what the people of the interwebs think about what I have to say. <laughs> Hence the topic tonight, which is destroy all Bigfoots. Kill every last one of them. And not just Bigfoot mind you. Uh, I also mean to uh, extend this notion to Dogman, Fae, Leprechauns and shit, uh, all cryptids. Just kill them all. So, this point might be a bit controversial to some of you, and I get it. And to address that, I just wanted to add that when I come up on my platform and propose the notion of killing every last single motherfucking one of these cryptids, I'm not doing it out of a place of hate or prejudice or resent or spite or any of those feelings. As a matter of fact, I would actually prefer if we didn't have to kill them. Right? I mean, we gotta. But, yeah, I do wish that we didn't. But, unfortunately, the circumstances and the chips, they fall where they may. And we're left with no choice. The reason why I propose killing Bigfoot is simply out of principle. That's it. Just principle. Bigfoot's ass does not belong here. And he needs to go. And if we can't get him to go, then we got to end him. And Dogman, and Faye, and Leprechauns and shit, whatever. Whatever fucking cryptids there are out there have to fucking die. Or leave. Preferably leave, because, again, I don't want to kill them. But if leaving is not an option, then we got no other choice. Now... Where does this whole notion come from? I'll explain. <clears throat> I've done a few shows now lately, these past few months, where I did, where I brought up uh, this book series actually called The Law of One. And uh, I do apologize if some of you have uh, seen some of those shows and have heard me speak on the topic of The Law of One. Uh, Please forgive me for sounding like a broken record, but I do feel like I must reiterate this story because uh, there might be some people in the chats and listening at home who are not familiar with what the law of one actually is. Let me explain. Back in uh, between the years of 1981 and 1984, I believe it was in uh, Louisville, Kentucky, there was like a team of four people. Uh, led by this guy named Don Elkins, who was a physics professor and a UFO researcher. And he, uh, with his team, his small team, and 
the lady by the name of I'm looking it up right now. I can't believe I fucking forgot it just now. But her name is Carla Rukert. I believe that's how you pronounce it. She was the channeler. She was like a meditator, new age thinker. And she would go into these trances. And what the research team would do is when she was, they, well, they would have to set it up in this really weird way where she would lie down. I think it was either on a, yeah, it was on a bed, eyes covered with like some kind of towel. There would be crystals all around her. Uh, her body would have to be pointed in the exact right angle. They would have a Bible in there. And it would have to be situated like in a certain position, like right by her head as she is sleeping in this trance in this meditative state. And she would channel this six density being, right? We're third density, technically according to the law of one, but this is a six density being. Okay. I think there are like a total of eight densities. <clears throat> so this being that was known as Ra was this six density higher dimensional being that was about 2.5 billion years old formed on the planet Venus 2.5 billion years ago and was communicating through this Carla uh, Rukert woman and was being interviewed by Don Elkins and his team and Basically, they would sit around her with notebooks and uh, tape recorders and ask it questions. And it would give its answers about the nature of the universe, the law of one, all the different extraterrestrial species and beings and the hierarchy and the coalitions, how the afterlife works, what the different densities are about. It's fun reading. I'm not saying I believe it, and I'm not saying I disbelieve it, but I did read it because I kind of wanted to know what they had to say. That's it. So when I explain to this to you, don't think that I'm like preaching the story because, you know, whether or not this whole story of the law of one and these four people who channeled this ancient being known as Ra, whether or not it's bullshit, I'll leave that up to you folks to decide. That's not neither here nor there for me. So during the course of this, it's really a, a book series, okay? It's, it was a number of books arranged like an interview form, question and answer. And this law of one is significant because it is the only source I have found in my limited time in the cryptid and paranormal community it's literally the only one that offers up an actual origin story for cryptids. All cryptids. It just lays right out. Person asks, well, so what's up with these cryptids, man? What's up with Bigfoot? And Ra was like, oh, okay, I'll explain to you who and what they are, where they come from, and what they're about. And then bam, out comes the actual origin of all Bigfoots, all cryptids including dog well it doesn't mention dog man but i'm just assuming that dog man is part of that lot but it just lays it out and i found zero other sources that provide an actual origin story for these creatures now don't get it twisted or confused people are, are going to say well what about the native american accounts no native americans don't give the actual origin story they may give the oldest stories they may give accounts of Bigfoot when they were living in the Americas before the uh, Europeans came along and how they were living in a more natural state. But they don't offer up their motherfucking origin story because they don't know. Okay? Not to diss on my Native American brothers and sisters out there. Okay? Love and respect all of y'alls, but you guys don't offer up an origin story. The law of one does. And since... This is the only origin story that I've come across that I am aware of. 
I am going to presume for the sake of this episode and this conversation, I am going to presume that the law of one is correct just for the sake of argument. Okay. I don't actually believe it. And again, I don't fully disbelieve it either. I'm just going to just, let's just say, say for the sake of argument, the origin story is the origin story. Because there are no others. <clears throat> I mean, there are definitely theories out there. But there are no straight up origin stories. So you may be asking at this point, what? well, what is the origin story for Bigfoot? Okay. <clears throat> Let me explain. The law of one or raw outlines that uh, at one point, and this is not just with raw, this is in numerous esoteric circles and even some mainstream scientists, states that at one point in the solar system's history, there was a planet that existed between where Mars and Jupiter are. Now, those of you who are familiar with some basic science knowledge, I guess, are aware that there is an asteroid belt uh, in that uh, orbit where uh, this planet should be. And many people in these circles will agree that the asteroid field itself is actually the remains of this planet that was once there that was ultimately annihilated. And they call this planet, well, there's multiple names, but the most common one you might hear is Maldek, M-A-L-D-E-K. So, when this planet was destroyed, the inhabitants of that planet died with it. And this planet, according to Ra, and according to some of these esoteric circles, make the bold claim that this planet was indeed inhabited by its own civilization that did leave its own, uh, reach its own level of technological achievements. <clears throat> So when that planet was destroyed, all the inhabitants were destroyed with it. And their souls, of course, like all things with souls, went over into the afterlife. And according to the raw material, once your soul crosses over to that... Oh, man, I just got a fucking text message. Anyway. When those souls cross over, they're able to incarnate uh, pretty much anywhere in the universe. And a lot of those chose to incarnate on Earth. But unfortunately, it was all, Earth was already occupied by Earth shit. So it was left. So these incarnations of these dead inhabitants of Maldek, which was destroyed, uh, were basically incarnating on Earth without bodies. And so they were kind of wandering around trying to figure out which bodies that they would inhabit. A lot of them were, were relegated to the wildernesses and the woods, unable to find bodies until they were eventually able to occupy the bodies of animals, namely apes and presumably dogs, because, you know, dog man. Or goats, goat man, or giant moths, moth man, or whatever the fuck. I don't know. So that is indeed where Bigfoot comes from. That is the origin story. He is one of these inhabitants of this planet Maldek that got destroyed, incarnated on Earth, spirit occupies the body of an ape, bam, you got Bigfoots. And according to Raw, there are actually three different subspecies of Bigfoots, with the third being a total thought form, which, you know, however you want to interpret that. So yeah, there it is, folks. The origin of Bigfoot. That's where Bigfoot comes from. Maldek. The only origin story there is for Bigfoot. <clears throat> At least that I'm aware of. So, thinking about this, thinking about those circumstances, and, you know, just presuming that they're true, just led me to one final conclusion, after all. What that means is cryptids as former inhabitants of Maldek, including Bigfoot, Dogman, Fay, Leprechauns and shit. They're all at the end of the day, homeless aliens. That's what they are. Homeless ass aliens. Once I realized that, I started realizing 
what Earth actually is to these alien races. Dude, we're Portland. We're San Francisco. We're at a place that aliens fly by and they see us shitting on the sidewalks. And they'd be like, damn, this place sucks. That's us to them, to the galaxy, to the Milky Way. We are Portland of the Milky Way. And why do I say this? Because we let homeless ass aliens just run around and we don't do shit about it. And it, honestly, I'm, I'm frankly fucking embarrassed for us. We got these gray aliens flying over us, right? David Grush just came out to the world and basically announced, yes, there are aliens. They're fucking out there, okay? They're flying around. The government's got some of their shit trying to reverse engineer that stuff. Good luck. And we got some non-human biologics up in this bitch. You know what that means, right? Them aliens are real. They're out there. And they're seeing us. And are laughing at us. Because we can't even handle our, our own little goddamn homeless alien problem in our own backyards. Meanwhile, the gray aliens are flying around in their UAPs, right? And we know they're there, thanks to David Grush. You're a true American, sir, and a true patriot. We know they're there. They see all this shit going on. And what do they think about us? We're Portland to them. We're San Francisco. And I say that shit stops. So, these homeless-ass aliens got to fucking leave. Sorry, that's just what it is. They either got to leave or they got to be destroyed. Now think about it, okay? I'm assuming that most of you here are American who are listening. And you know how America is with their gun laws. Imagine if some homeless-ass meth head just came up on your front yard, pitched a tent, took out a lawn chair, and just made himself at home in your own front yard. Are you going to take that shit? No. What are you going to do? Well, like most pe normal people, you'd probably wind up calling the cops. Cops come, tell them to leave. They come back. Now what? You keep calling the cops? Or you might just stand up for your own goddamn American rights, march out into the front yard with a firearm, point it at their goddamn heads and be like, yo, fucking leave or die. It's your choice. And is that not what Dogman and Bigfoot are doing in our backyards right now? On our planet? Shitting in our woods? Pissing in our rivers? These homeless-ass aliens? Now, again, I don't want to see them die. If we had a choice, like if, I, if we had the choice and I could choose, I would choose that the fucking gray aliens just come up come up on them with their uh, UAPs and just fucking pick up their own goddamn alien trash. But no, they, they don't seem to give a shit about leaving their homeless ass fucking aliens here in our own backyards. And we got to deal with it. And now these fucking dog man and Bigfoots are wandering around scaring all these poor white people. Poor white people. They're all so scared and terrified and traumatized. That's got to end. Not just for the sake of the safety and the sanity of, of these people, but also just the principle of it. It's just fucked up. These alien, homeless ass aliens, these broke ass aliens who can't even afford their own fucking UAPs are just sitting in our woods wandering around. You got dog man running up on cars and shit. You know what I mean? And we can't even be bothered to pick up weapons, march into woods, and flush them out and get rid of them. It's embarrassing. It's embarrassing to the rest of the alien community out there. Oh, and by the way, there's a bunch of different uh, species and races, a couple different coalitions and confederations, and they're all watching us. They're watching us running around fucking up this planet, being all scared of their homeless trash, not knowing what to do with our thumbs up our asses, being all scared. 
instead of taking action, what do we do? We just talk about that shit, speculate about it on fucking podcasts. It's embarrassing. What we need to do is take action. These homeless ass aliens, they got to go. Okay. This ain't Portland. This is our home. It's not San Francisco. You can just take a dump on the sidewalk, leave your needles around. It's fucked up. That's why, out of principle, these cryptids got to go. And it doesn't please me to say this. Because, you know, at the end of the day, I think Bigfoot's cool. You know, I, I think it's an interesting creature. I'm grateful for it creating this community because without the cryptid community, I wouldn't have met so many of my friends. So again, I got no personal beef with Bigfoot or Dogman. You know, if Dogman wants to do his thing, let him do his thing. But now you're in our house being all homeless and shit. Shitting in our woods. That ain't right. Now, I know there have been talk of killing potentially Bigfoot or Dogman in the cryptic community because I see it so many times in a lot of these shows. Um, you know, one of the observations I make about the cryptic community. First of all, it's almost all predominantly like, what's the nice way of saying it? Country people. There's nothing wrong with that, by the way. You know, I love country people. I'm friends with a lot of country people. Hell, like most of my friends are country people. And I go to, I go to the countryside and hang out with them. We'll drink beers, listen to country music. I'll do a funny, a few funny Asian jokes. It's a good time. But I notice there are a lot of these country people in these chat rooms, in these cryptid talk shows. And uh, one of the patterns that have emerged, according to my observation, is that a lot of y'all seem to enjoy jerking off over your gun collections. Because you see these conversations all the time in a chat where people are like, well, I'm not scared of Bigfoot because I got my 45 ACP. Well, I got my 12 gauge. I got my 30 odd six, you know, and the, the chat becomes this endless stream of people pretty much just doing a dick measuring contest with what guns they own. How so fucking typically American of you. And then they say stuff like, well, I'm not worried about dog man. Cause I got, I'm going to have my AR 15. Let's see what dog man does about that AR 15. So fucking sad. It's pathetic. And I'm not saying this because I'm against guns, okay? I'm pro-guns. Um, as a matter of fact, if you are going to go out and investigate, you would be stupid not to be armed, okay? Please be armed. Um, I'm not against guns, so it's not about that. And I'm not against Americans or my country friends because, yeah, I love America, right? It's my favorite country, objectively. I mean, Korea is like, okay. I mean, I really mean objectively, America is my favorite country. Yeah, I mean, I do talk a lot about Korean culture and I've lived there and I identify with being Korean, but there's a lot of crap about Korea that does suck, especially if you live there. So um, objectively speaking, I would have to say America is my favorite country for multiple different reasons I don't need to get into. So I'm, uh, my point is I'm not anti-gun, I'm not anti-American, all right? So when I'm, when, when I'm pointing this shit out in these cryptid chat rooms, I don't mean to say that these people shouldn't be armed if they go out into the field, okay? They should be armed. You should. You'd be fucking stupid not to. As a matter of fact, I'm not going to name names, but I got this one friend who's been talking about uh, going out into the field and investigating the LBL in Tennessee alone camping there for multiple days alone looking for dog man unarmed and i'm just like bro do you have a death wish please be armed i mean could someone please buy this dude a gun for the love of god please be armed okay my man's got a death wish 
And no, I'm not going to mention the name. I think some of you can figure it out, though. But please don't investigate the LBL alone unarmed looking for Dog Man, okay? I cherish our friendship and I want you to stay alive. So, <clears throat> but yeah, a lot of these Americans do seem to enjoy jerking off over their gun collections. And my main problem with it is that, um, again, I'm not against guns. I am anti-hubris. And all these people jerking off over their guns collections, talking about, oh, I got this gun and that gun. It's fucking hubris, because guns are not the fucking answer to eradicating Bigfoot. And there are a couple of reasons why. Now, I don't know if Bigfoot's bulletproof or not. You know, there's some people who propose that the bullets will just pass right through them because it's all supernatural natural and interdimensional or it will just pass into a portal or you know bigfoot's got all this magical shit i don't know about any of that but that's not why i think uh guns would not be effective okay the reason why a couple reasons number one if guns were actually effective at killing bigfoot i would imagine there would be like a hundred dead bigfoot and dead dog man up on display somewhere but there aren't any are there there's a lot of people out there with guns who encounter Bigfoot and Dogman. But we don't have a single fucking body, okay? Number two. And this is the most important thing to remember, folks, to all my American friends out there. Guns are fucking useless if you can't see your target. If you cannot see your target, you can't aim for your target. If you can't aim for your target, you can't hit your target. And if you can't hit your target, then what fucking good is any gun? That's why I say hubris. People talking about, oh, this piece that I got, this is going to be the answer to Bigfoot. Yeah, you got to fucking find him first and you got to see him first, dumbass. Fucking morons. Just think about it. Just think. Use your brain. Nine times out of ten, if you're out in the woods and you encounter a Bigfoot, guess what? It saw you, it heard you, and it smelled you way before you even perceived it. Nine times out of ten, Bigfoot's going to see you first before you see it. It's going to decide, hmm, this random human walking down the woods, tramping up all this noise, carrying his whatever AR-15. Should I... Smash this guy's skull with a rock from out of nowhere from behind a tree. Should I just sneak up on him? Should I just kill him? Because Bigfoot could. Because, again, no matter what kind of firearm or caliber of weaponry you got, if you can't see your target and it sees you, the gun doesn't mean shit. So get your head out of your asses. Seriously. Okay? I'm not against guns. I'm not against Americans. I'm against hubris. Besides, like I've heard stories, like the hardcore stories, right? You know, they're the stories that uh, cryptid people like to talk about on podcasts. But then once the cameras go off and then we tell the hardcore stories of like, yo, I got this one story where Bigfoot just tore this dude apart and left his gun lying up gently up against a uh, the trunk of a tree while all of his limbs were all dismembered and hanging up from a tree as if to say this is what happens to the last motherfucker who tries to take a shot at us i mean you know those are the stories that some cryptid people that we cryptid people share when the cameras go off you know people being ripped in half and then the gun being gently placed right by the body Sends a pretty clear message to me. I have heard a few stories of uh, people who have managed to shoot a dog man or a Bigfoot. And, you know, some stories, they don't seem to do anything. Other stories, they seem to pass right through. Other stories, you might see a tuft of hair fly up and then Bigfoot barely acknowledges it. It's hard to know what to truly believe and what to truly ascertain as to Bigfoot's durability against firearms. But needless to say, it doesn't matter because most people with firearms walking around the woods expecting to find Bigfoot and shoot him don't. 
because they don't fucking see him. I once heard this one quote where this guy was like, you know, if you don't have a gun, but then the other guy do does, what's the best way to take him out? Tackle him from behind when he's not expecting it. Because if you can't see your target, if you can't line up a shot, what good is a gun? That being said, all Bigfoot researchers out there in the field should be packing heat. You'd be stupid not to, for multiple reasons that I'm sure we can all agree on that I don't need to get into. So you may be asking, then Donnie, what do you propose? How do we kill Bigfoot? You know, um, this episode is going to be airing uh, Wednesday. Right now it's Tuesday, uh, and I'm going to just put this up after I record, and then I'm going to time it so that uh, on Wednesday, tomorrow, it's gonna. this episode is going to come on right after the episode I did with uh, Jason and his friend Ray. We did an episode on Jason McLean questions everything. It was a debate, and the topic of the debate was the nature of Bigfoot. Because, you know, Jason and... You know, all his whole thing is that Bigfoot might not be what he appears to be, going into the whole notion of whether or not it's a natural creature or not, dog man the same, or is it something posing as a cryptid to try to persuade the spiritual path of uh, people? You know, that's a topic that we spoke about, uh, that you probably watched maybe like an hour before this show. And in that show, I served as a referee. And at one point they asked me, Donnie, what do you think? What do you think about the nature of Bigfoot? I thought about it. Man, my answer was pretty clear. I'm not, I don't really give a shit about the nature of Bigfoot. Listen, I don't give a fuck if it's like, real like physical or tangible or spiritual don't give a fuck i'm in the cryptic community for completely different reasons i don't give a shit about proving it to nobody i don't give a damn about no pictures i'm not trying to get this posted on cnn or find proof so that everyone in the world can find out i'm not trying to research shit well that's not true i am researching something But the only thing I'm interested in researching is how to kill these motherfuckers. Because we got to. It's principle. And upon uh, listening to countless stories and uh, accounts, I've uh, gathered a few things. I believe the way to deal with the Bigfoot problem is we need to form a serious army of people who are serious about actually eradicating Bigfoot. We need to do solid intel into their weaknesses, number one. What are they vulnerable to? What are the things that they fear? The second thing, how do we find them? How do we lure them out? And the law of one, going back to my earlier topic, actually mentions that the, you know, when when they were asking you questions about Bigfoot, it flat out said, listen, if you were looking for a Bigfoot body, you wouldn't be looking in the woods. You would be looking in the caves. I mean, that's their real home, according to this raw being. So, All you people wandering around the woods looking for Bigfoot. I mean, if you want to be real efficient with your time and your efforts, you got to be getting that spelunking gear, baby. You got to go spelunking. Now, I'm not saying that I plan on going spelunking. I'm actually kind of claustrophobic, so I I have zero interest in going in any cave. Zero none. No thanks.
I see way, way too many fucked up like spelunking stories on YouTube. And I'm like, hell no, I ain't doing that shit. But uh, for all you uh, fledgling Bigfoot trackers out there, wandering around these woods, you're wasting your time, boy. You got to go into them caves. You got to get proper spelunking gear and proper spelunking training. And you just got to go in there and flush them at the apes out. We got to find them. We got to be able to flush them out. We got to know their weaknesses, their habits. And no, not for the sake of research or for sharing with the world. Fuck that. I'm not trying to prove Bigfoot exists. I know he exists. My concern is making him not exist. <clears throat> I've heard through the grapevine that the thing Bigfoot truly fears is not bullets. It's fire. I'm not saying that we should go around into the woods with uh, flamethrowers and Molotov cocktails because they wind up burning the entire woods down like that. No, that's not what I mean at all. But I think the ultimate weapon to kill a Bigfoot would be thermite-tipped crossbows. We need to develop thermite-tipped crossbow bolts we need to find some capital, pull it together, and develop methods for manufacturing this ammunition type. Also, we do, I guess, we need to buy some crossbows. And maybe some a little crossbow training. I'm sure some of you have used a crossbow. Um, or bows, I guess. You know, modern compound bows those are pretty cool too i mean they it's just that i don't know crossbows seem like yeah i mean either one's fine but what's important is the tip the business end of that weapon thermite a localized burn so as to not cause a full-on forest fire but enough to dig its way into bigfoot's body and end that ass That is what I propose. We would need a team, a large team, pretty much an army or a squad of people with a diverse set of skills. <clears throat> we will need weapons experts, people who are good at intel gathering, survivalists, people who know like the terrain and the land. Obviously, we will need spelunking experts. You know, I will propose because um, I guess I would be in charge of leadership and strategy and tactics. I mean, I will humbly accept that role. I guess I got to be, someone's got to be the general, right? We will need some people with uh, magical abilities. Maybe some people with like ninja skills as well. I'd say like sword fighting abilities because I would say probably just as important as having a firearm when going out into the field is to have a good blade or a good melee weapon uh just to have both i would I, my recommendation is have one firearm and one good blade just in case um i also have heard through the grapevine that the one metal they do actually seem to fear is iron so I do think we would need to find a way to manufacture a bunch of like iron tipped spears. Uh, if we could get, get enough so that we could get, give one out to each member so that they could have that. Um, if they can't, you know, get their hands on like more conventional weapons or, you know, cause iron tipped spears would probably be cheaper to make. And, you know, if you want to bring your own backup firearm, there's no harm to it. You know, again, I'm not against firearms. So, yeah, that's what I think it should be the real way to kill Bigfoot. 
go to the caves, find out where they are in the caves, which won't be easy. Figure out a way to flush them out. I'd say smoke or mustard gas. I mean, it's a cave, you know. There are no other real animals. We should mustard gas, gas that ass. Drop some mu mustard gas on a Bigfoot community. You know, maybe there's like multiple family groups. Make them like try to run out of the cave. And once they run out, you, my soldiers, will be ready with your thermite-tipped crossbows or bows. We'll have the uh, infantry, the frontline squad with their uh, iron-tipped uh, spears. And then we'll have the cleanup crew who will come in and sweep in. And if they want to take out their assault rifles or their firearms to, you know, put down any Bigfoot that might be wounded. And then once we do that, we move on to Dogman. And we end that ass as well. Sick of fucking Dogman stories of him, like, all grinning and smiling into people's windows. That's what I call a D-bag. I think I know the way to kill Dogman, by the way. Electrocution. Do you guys, uh, any of you guys see that clip of uh, Thomas Edison doing uh, that uh, electrical experiment with alternating current? And uh, well, was it direct current or alternating current? I forgot which one he was like trying to make fun of but for the experiment he basically electrocutes an, an elephant to death experiment and the video itself was extremely fucked up i mean thomas edison was a fucked up dude but anyway i bring that up is because that what thomas edison did to that uh elephant that's what we gotta do to dog man we gotta electrocute that ass we got to lure a bunch of dog man out into like, I'd say like a body of water, drop a few power lines in there. Dog man problems fixed. So for those of you out there who are in agreement or who may not actually, actually no, for those of you out there who are, might be a little bit shocked and horrified that I'm proposing killing all these creatures that you love to hear about for those of you who are still questioning or not sure or on the fence let me at leave you with this one final nugget of wisdom okay if you look in the bible who did the bible create this earth for did he or i'm sorry who did god create this earth for who did god create this world for in Genesis. Did he make it to be a fucking toilet bowl for Bigfoot? Did he make this world? Did he make the Garden of Eden so that what? Dogman can have a place to hang out? No. God made this world for us humans. And I think some of you people in the cryptic community may have lost sight of that. This is our fucking planet, it's not theirs. They don't belong here. They're just a bunch of homeless bums. A bunch of broke-ass aliens who can't even afford their own UFOs. And we're running around all scared of them. All in deference to them. I've heard those podcast stories where like Bigfoot can mentally talk. Oh yeah, if Bigfoot, if you're out there and you can hear my telepathic communications, then here's my message for you. Okay. God didn't make this world for them. He made this world for us. This is our world. This is our yard. And it's about time we actually remember that and take charge and kick these homeless bums off our front lawn. Just remember, in the beginning, in Genesis, God created Adam and Eve. He did not create Bigfoot and Steve. 
Good night, folks. By the way, who the fuck is Steve? <laughs>